Suppose you approach three closed doors, and I tell you that behind two of these doors is a goat. Yep, you heard me right. A goat. But behind the other remaining door is a brand spanking new top of the range beautiful, expensive sports car, your favorite car you could ever imagine. And I want you to try and win this car by picking the door that has the car behind it. Now, this seems quite unlikely, considering there's three doors. Well, what are the probabilities? Let's delve into it. Let's label the doors. One, two, and three. Which door are you going to pick? Let's say you pick door number two. Now, is the car behind this, or is the goat one of the goats behind this? Well, what is the probability? Well, there's three doors, one car. There is a one in three chance that you are going to win the car. Here is where a little bit of a twist comes into play. I, as the host, know what is behind all three doors. I know where the car is. So after you have made your selection, I say to you, I'm going to show you what is behind one of these doors. And I'm going to show you that behind door three is a goat. No. I will ask you a very important question. Would you like to stick with your original choice, door two, you know, you went with your gut at the start? Or would you like to switch to door number one? A lot of you may think, well, there's two doors left, one car, one goat. I'm just as likely to win the car if I was to switch or stick i.e. it is a 50-50 chance that I will win the car. Well, you would be wrong. You are actually twice as more likely to win the car. If you were to switch to door number one, and as we will see, behind door two was a goat. Is that lovely car? Of course, the car I'm imagining is Lightning McQueen. Now, why is this the case? Well, let's get into it. This fun maths brain teaser puzzle, some may say paradox, is actually a very famous one that is called the Monte. Also known as, well, the game show problem because the problem actually originates from a game show called Let's Make a Deal, which was hosted by, you guessed it, <laughs> Monty Hall. And here's a lovely picture of Monty Hall, who was born in 1921 and sadly passed away in the year 2017. Now, Monty Hall was a very good game show host on this TV show, and this problem was part of one of the segments in which he would invite members of the audience down to the stage and ask them that very question. He'd show them the three doors, ask them to pick one of the three doors, knowing that there's a car behind one of them and a goat behind two of them, and every time that a member of the audience selected a door. Monty Hall, after doing so, would reveal a goat behind one of the two remaining doors. The key thing here is that he would always show them a, a goat. He would, of course, never show them the car is behind one of the other doors because 
was the goal of this, is to try and trick them, to make them think, oh, should I stick, should I switch? If he was to just show them there was a car, of, of course they would realize they'd lost. So he would always show them a goat. This problem is probably one of my favorite mathematic concepts, and I think in tonight's video I'm going to do my best at trying to explain to you the reasoning behind switching to the other door, and why that is twice as likely to win you a car than if you were to stick with your chosen door. First up, one of the methods I want to show you is a little bit of a sort of comparison method where we're going to look at the differences between switching and sticking. So we're going to make it kind of like a little bit of a chart and we'll look at the amount of times that you win in each case. So of course when you play this game there are three doors. Now I have numbered them in this video just to kind of make it easier to understand. So when you first come up to the doors, there are three doors you can pick. Of course you have door number one, you have oops, door number two, and you have door number three. Now from earlier, I have told you that the car is behind door number one. So for this instance, if you pick door number one, sorry, you pick a car. Now, this first instance we're going to look at if you stick S D. If you were to stick with the car after I reveal one of the goats, well, you'll end up with the car, won't you? In the second option, let's say you pick door two, you pick a goat. If you stick this time, S, D, well, you'll end up with a goat. And in the case of door number three, we know there's a goat behind there this time. Let's say you stick, you will end up with a goat. The key thing is, after I, the host, have opened the door, you are learning new information. Sticking is not good. And we can see, if you stick, you will lose two out of three instances in this case. Now, this case wouldn't matter if I hadn't numbered the doors. Let's say I hadn't numbered them. It's all still the same. You could pick a car, stick, win the car, a goat, stick, and win the goat, uh, look, win the goat, pick a goat, stick, and win the other goat. But I'm going to bring the numbers back in for this. Now let's take a look at the alternative option. Which is indeed, if you were to switch. Again, we have one, two, three doors. Let's say you pick door number one, the car, and you switch SW. You will win a goat. Let's say you pick door two. You pick a goat. Then you switch. You win a car. And finally, if you pick door number three, the goat, or the other goat, if you switch, you will of course win the car. The reason you when this is because you will not pick the one that has the goat, of course. So in this case, let's take a look. You switch and you win a goat. No, you don't want that. You switch and you win a car. Yes, you want that. You switch and you win a car. Yes, 
yes, you want that. Let's count up the amount of wins in each case. Well, in the stick cases, you win the car one out of three times. And in the switch cases, you win a car two out of three times. So this is the first method. I like to call the comparison method. Some of you keen-eyed or fan favourites of TV game shows might be thinking, ah, this is quite similar to Deal or No Deal, in which you begin by picking a box out of 22 boxes. The way the game show works is after you pick your box, let's say box number 7, my favourite number, there is a 1 in 22 chance you have picked one of these values here. We have one pence, one, what's one cent, all the way up to $250,000. So when you've picked your box, of course, the goal of the game is to win the $250,000. There is a 1 in 22 chance that you have won in that box the $250,000. But, of course, it is equally likely it's the one pence, or the 15,000, or the 250. Basically, it's all the same, but it's a 1 in 22 that you've picked the 250k. Now, as the show goes on, I, as the host, will ask you to pick boxes and reveal one at a time what is in each box. So, of course, there's going to be 21 boxes remaining. Now, this is obviously not to scale this drawing. <laughs> uh, whoops. Let's just assume that this is 22 boxes. Of course, it is not. It's just 12. There is a 21 in 22 chance that the 250k is in one of the other 21 remaining boxes. It's very unlikely you're going to pick the big money at the start, but if you were to pick the 21 remaining boxes, it's more likely you're going to. Now, as the show goes on, you will pick the boxes. Let's say it's not in that box, it's not in this box, and we keep going along. And I've on purposely left this one out. And we get to the very end, and I say to you, okay, there is one box left that you have not picked. Would you like to stick with box number seven that you picked at the start? Or would you like to switch to this box that you have not selected yet? Let's say box 14, which could have the $250,000 in it. Obviously, you're going to switch, right? And you would be much more likely to win the big money because, well, it's the one box left over. And in most of the cases, when the person switches, they will win uh, the $250,000. Let's apply this concept of the dealer no deal situation to our problem but a pretty crazy version of our problem, as you can see. In fact, what you are seeing right now on your screen is a giant version of the Montreal problem where I have presented you with 100 doors. And I tell you in this instance that there are 99 goats behind 99 of these doors. And there is one car behind one random door. You're thinking in this case, oh gosh, it's very unlikely I'm going to win uh, the car. In fact, what are the odds that you pick the car right now? There is, of course, a 1 in 100 chance. Now, I as the host, after you have picked your door, let's suppose, by the way, you pick this door right here. I as the host, or Monty Hall, is going to reveal 98 doors that have goats behind them. Why 98? Well, in the instance of the 
three doors what is actually going on. You pick a door, and Monty Hall is essentially revealing all other goats except from one door which could have a goat or a car. If there were four doors and you picked one door, he is going to reveal two goats, leaving one door which could potentially have a car, a car or, a do or a goat. So that's why I am revealing 98 and not, say, 5 or 6. So I am going to reveal that there is goats behind all of these doors. Or nothing, because I was a bit too lazy to copy and paste goats. Uh, behind these four doors are goats. Behind all of these doors are goats. Behind all of these doors are goats. Behind all of these doors are goats. And behind all of these doors are also goats. And I have left you with your original choice and one very mysteriously closed door. Now I ask you, would you like to switch to the other door? Or stick with your current door? Of course you're going to ask to switch, because why on earth would I leave this door closed? Well, you guessed it. There is indeed the car. <laughs> Lightning McQueen behind that door. And I think that's a very fun way to visualize it. So I've been talking a lot about probability throughout this video and the remainder of this video is going to be heavily probability and statistics oriented as that is the best way to fully understand it but hopefully so far you are kind of grasping the concept of this fascinating problem and drifting off to sleep at the same time as doing so in which case I hope you are enjoying. If you are be sure to leave a like and subscribe. In this case here, I want to try and explain to you what is going on with the probability when I am showing you the goats. So again, we have our three doors, one, two, and three, and you pick a door. Let's say you pick door number three. There is a one in three chance that you have picked a car. However, there is a 2 in 3 chance that the car is behind. Let's do this pen and we'll draw a little box. There is a 2 in 3 chance that the car is behind one of these doors, would you say? Yeah. Well, after I reveal to you there is a goat behind this middle door. What is happening to the probability? Of course, there is a 2 in 3 chance that there is a, still a car, but it's now getting condensed. You see, what's actually happening now is this probability, this 2 in 3, is getting condensed. Oops, that didn't work so well. It's getting condensed to this door because there is no hope in there being a car behind this door because now you have learned new information. There is a 0% chance of there being a car where the goat is. There is a 1 in 3 chance of it still being here, but there's now a 2 in 3 chance of it being behind this door. And that's where I'm going to lead you on to talk about what are called probability trees. Now, probability trees are a great way to understand probability and how they sort of combine. And we're going to look at two different types of probability trees. In our case, we're going to look firstly at a probability tree if we are to stick, or we'll call it stay. I think stay sounds nicer.
wiser if we were to stay with our current door. So how does this work? Well, we start at the beginning, and there are three doors. One, two, and three. Behind one door is a car. Behind one door is a goat. And behind another door is another goat. You make your pick, so you choose at this stage right here. There is a 1 in 3 chance of you picking a car. There is also a 1 in 3 chance of you picking this goat. And there is a 1 third chance of you picking this goat. We're looking at the goats as two separate goats. Let's pretend this is goat number 1 and goat number 2. If you are to stay after I have shown you a goat, Let's take a look at what happens. Well, there are two doors left open, or left. One with a car, one with a goat. Of course, the goat being the one that I've shown you. Let's repeat this. A car and a goat, a car and a goat. If you pick the car and stay with the car, what are the probability that you stay with the car? Well, there is one. One probability. It's 100% that if you pick the car and you stay, you're going to pick the car. If you pick the car and stay, what is the probability you end up with a goat? It's zero. There is no chance if you pick the car, stay, that you will win the goat. Now let's suppose you pick goat number one. If you stay with the goat, what is the probability that you get the car? Well, again, it's zero. If you pick the goat, stay, it's one. If you pick the other goat, goat number two, what is the probability if you stay that you get a car? Of course, it's zero. What's the probability if you stay with goat 2 that you win goat 2? It is indeed 1. So let's take a look at what happens here after each instance. What is the probability of each outcome? We have 1 in 3rd times 1 ending up with a card is 1 in 3rd. Or 1 in 3, sorry, 1 in 3rd doesn't really make sense. 1 in 3 times 0, there is a 0% chance if you pick the car, stay with the car that you get goat 1, or whichever goat I didn't show. In this case here, you pick goat 1, 1 in 3 times 0 is 0, 1 in 3 times 1, you can see this is just repetitive, 1 in 3 times 0. 1 in 3 times 1 is 1 in 3. And this makes sense because we have 1 in 3 plus 1 in 3 plus 1 in 3. 3 in 3 chances of whatever's going to happen. Let's take a look at each chance what happens. So, we have... In this case, you win the car. And I'm going to color it in green just to make it easier for us to see. What happens in the other cases where something could happen? You win the goat, that's bad. You win the goat, that is bad. So if we look at what happens in total here, where you have the goat, there is a 2 in 3 chance if you stay that you lose. You end up with a goat. But there is a 1 in 3 chance that you win if you stay when you play the game. In other words here, Staying loses majority of the time. Let's copy this entire probability tree and flip things up a little bit. Let's copy. Let's go down to a new page and let's paste. And we're going to change a few of the numbers because this time we are going to look at the case. If you switch... all the probabilities because we're going to look at that again. I'm going to keep that G in there. Let's 
get rid of all this. Okay, let's take a look at what happens. So, you make your choice. Let's say you pick the car. What is the probability you end up with the car if you switch? Well, again, there is a 1 in 3 chance at the start of each thing. The probability of you getting the car if you switch after picking the car is 0. What is the probability you get a goat if you pick the car and then switch? It's 1. It's always going to happen. And again, you can see this is a 1 or a 0 kind of thing. If you pick a goat, switch. What is the probability you get the car? It's 1. If you pick a goat, switch. What is the probability you get a goat? Of course, it is 0. You pick goat 2, you switch. What is the probability you get the car? What is the probability if you pick goat 2, if you switch, that you get a goat? It is, uh, sorry, why did I put 0? It is 1. And that is 0. Now we multiply everything out. A third times 0 is 0. A third times 1 is a third. A third times 1 is a third. Just multiplying along these lines. A third and 0. And now let's highlight our results. So let's take a look at our losses. We have a loss here. We get a goat. And that's it. Let's take a look at our wins. Well, of course, we're going to have a win here. And we're going to have a win here. And if we compare this again, looking very similar, except this time, there's a two-third chance that we win the car. But there's a one-third chance we lose and get the goat. So comparing these probability trees, you can see you're more likely to win in the switch scenario. And that is where I'm going to end this quick um, or brief 30-minute video on the Monty Hall problem. I hope this has kind of uh, been quite fun and quite interesting for you all. I know it's been a bit of a different video here, but I thought this would be a very fun problem to chat about, where we talk about the Monty Hall problem and why uh, this historic, uh, fascinating problem has caused paradoxes and debates online. And um, hopefully you have come to understand why switching is the best situation if at the start of the video you were very confused. So let me know your thoughts in the comments if you enjoyed this problem, if there's any other problems you'd like to see me compare. And uh, let me know which explanation made the most sense to you if it did. And um, yeah, I guess if you ever get in this situation, remember guys, always switch. Unless you want a goat. Thanks for watching everyone. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're not already.